So it says Premiere Pro removed the obsolete effects, which included channel blur. We've had to kind of get a lot of workarounds on how we can create the halation effect, which is probably why you click this video, to work in Premiere Pro. That being said, even though it's a lot of work, I've come up with a new solution that builds on my last video, which came up with a new solution. That's a, a better looking outcome. Still the same amount of work, but a better looking outcome for adding halation to your video in Premiere Pro. I will say that if you don't want to do this and you just want to give a plugin or a preset, you can go ahead and download that from the description below. But otherwise, let's hop into the video. We're going to skip through the beginning part and speed it up a little bit so you don't have to sit here forever on what we did last time because what we did last time is pretty much what we're doing this time with some other minor changes. Okay, so what is this all about, right? Premiere Pro, of course, has removed some obsolete effects. They're labeled obsolete effects, not because they're not used, but because they're old and legacy effects, I suppose, that they've decided to no longer support updating for. So they pretty much just removed them from the software as a whole. If this is your first time to the channel, I've made a lot of videos on this topic, Halation specifically in videos, because I really like the way it looks, but Premiere Pro doesn't have a plugin. So I've not only made my own, which you can download again from the link in the description, but I've come up with a lot of ways that you guys can do this yourself. And I'm gonna show you what I've done now to change my workflow from the last video on Halation in this one. And okay, so we have this shot and now there is no Halation in this shot. There's no visual effects to it. All I've done is convert the color space from log to rec 709. Um, and that's all we've done. First and foremost, we have to duplicate it like we always do. So hold Alt, duplicate that footage on top of itself. Now we wanna go ahead and we can add my bloom effect. So we can go bloom and type and drag that in. All that is is a luma key and a Gaussian blur. If we looked at our effect controls here, we'll scroll down. We'll see that my bloom preset is a luma key set to 88 and 81 for the threshold and cutoff respectively. And then Gaussian blur is at 20. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to do to it. I'm not teaching you why it works here. I'm just showing you what to do so that way you can get running and you can get going. All you wanna do now is make a duplicate of that bottom layer again. Hold Alt, click it, drag it up. But this time leave a gap between the top layer and that second layer because we need a clean slate below it as well. And that clean slate I've already gone ahead and made was a color mat, but I'm gonna right click. You can go new item, color mat. Make sure it's your sequence settings. In this case, these are my sequence settings. Press okay. Choose red. You can make it any red you want. I kind of like to choose the red and then make it go down a little bit so it's not perfect red. It has maybe a bit of orange in it. Press okay. I'm gonna leave it as color mat. You should probably title it if you wanna keep organized and stretch that to the length of your video clip. Now we want to go ahead, select both of those, right click it, nest it, press OK. Now we entered that nested one and we're doing the same thing we did in the last video. However, this is where things start to change. On the color mat, let's go ahead and apply the same effects we did last time. We want to add a track mat key to the color mat itself. We want to add a Gaussian blur to that color mat. And we want to add a Luma key right here to the video clip and not the color mat. That's something we did differently from last time. Now you'll notice it looks weird. That's OK. So go back to the color mat. Let's change some settings. Take the mat press none, choose the video layer that the video itself is from, which is this one. Choose matte alpha, change that to matte luma, go to blurriness on the Gaussian blur, make that 50, and let's turn it off te temporarily at least. And then we're gonna go back to the video clip with the luma key and set it to the same settings you had on the other one, 80 and 81. You'll notice that only the highlights are being selected and you know, maybe this isn't even enough here. So let's go 85 and I'll get rid of more of the footage and just keep the highlights again. And now we go back to color matte. Let's go to Gaussian blur, turn it back on. You'll see that it's all blurred. This is what we want. The difference here is that I added a Luma key to the video clip. So that way we're only isolating the highlights out of the red layer now. Because if we don't have this Luma key, for instance, we're choosing the whole footage, which kind of gave the last video's footage a red overlay that I wasn't happy with. So I've been sitting some time, you know, trying to figure this out. And this is what I've come up with. Turn that Luma key back on. You'll notice that only the highlights, again, are being selected. That's the luminance value here. Close the nested sequence. You don't need it. And that looks terrible, but that's okay. We're almost done. Select the nested sequence. Go ahead to opacity. Let's bring that to about 60%. So we're getting back to like what we had originally and change the blend mode. This is where the secret sauce is, you know what I'm saying? To screen or change it to overlay. Both of them will work. You can even go with lighten and you might find that it looks good to you too. You turn it on and off, you'll see that there's no red and now there's some red in the footage and you can play with the Luma key in that nested sequence to figure out where and what you want selected in the luminance values. So if I were to raise this to like 92 and this to 90, I would select a lot less of the actual footage and more of just the highlights themselves, which is probably a better look for this particular footage. And now I come back here and I have a slight halating, you know, type of vibe going on on uh, the footage itself. Now, this is still not as good as the channel bore effect that we used to use, but because we don't have that, we can either do two things. One, like I said, I have a preset. You can go down in the description. You can get that. It'll be the top link, or you can do this. So we're going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you want to get the preset, description, top link. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, all those boxes, by the way, we got a video coming really soon. So stay tuned. See you then.